Well, it was really unexpected. We got a call from Bronco Lustig, and uh, uh, I returned his call, and he said, do you want to work on this film, Hannibal? And I was like, well, of course. <laughs> you know, we knew Ridley was involved, and that was one of the major draws for wanting to work on the film. I'd been a big fan of Ridley Scott for well, forever. He's an incredibly visual director uh, with a tremendous understanding of what the limitations are of makeup effects or animatronics. And he's also willing to listen to what the advantages would be if we built a makeup effect or an animatronic puppet in place of using the real actor or the real boar, for example, or the real baby. This film was so much fun working with him because he, he wanted to try everything and he, let's try this, you know, and then we try it, no, it doesn't work, let's try this. We knew it was gonna be very difficult to pull off a character like Verger, because all these people have read the book, they have the expectation of what, you know, in their minds, and you have to come up with something that's going to satisfy them, let alone, you know, do something different, unique. What was fun and horrifying about that was that trying to create something new, because we did all these designs. We did like 20 different heads, all these different people were sculpting, and everything looked like a zombie. You know, you put, when you start trying to do a skeletal form, building up on a face, anything, teeth, everything, putting teeth in, everything looked like a zombie. And we we're just like, oh, jeez, what are we gonna do? I wanted it to be actually something that really looked like a genuine, well, hideous scarring. And so during the process of trying to decide how do we make a man monstrous at the same time real, not like a face from the house of wax. There's a big question um, in filmmaking of what, what the audience is going to accept, you know, leaning more toward the realism or more toward the interpretation of it. Uh, if you look at a, a horrible accident scene and you see you know, dead bodies laying there, oftentimes it looks so fake. So we had done reference um, as to what this character should look like and really decided to move away from that because the audience, we didn't think, would really accept it as being something that could happen. You know, somebody that's just so horribly disfigured, uh, people just don't, don't want to look at it and don't want to accept it. We did real elaborate uh anatomically correct, you know, muscles and things. And we talked to, um, Ridley brought in expert doctors and talked about, well, that would dry up, it wouldn't work, and, you know, expose stuff like that. Just So when I got to Florence, finally, um, Ridley said, I have a new idea, you know, and he showed me some pictures of a fetal type of a thing. And it was interesting because it was touching, really touching. And I thought we'd go in that direction so I wanted to make Mason Verger rather more touching than monstrous, because I think at the end of the day, I think Mason Verger was really rather amusing, was touching, but still hadn't lost his sense of humor, and was, you know, almost sympathetic. So we sculpted this in a day, and we showed it to him the next day, and uh, he liked it a lot, but he wanted to change some things, and we took it another day, and basically that was the design that's in the film. Well, it's um, five hours of makeup, then an hour or so to get clothes and the wig and really it's six hours to get all the pieces together. I really love working with Gary. You can put him in anything and he just will make it come alive. So when I heard he might be up for this film, I was like really excited because I said, I bet the, you know, I bet he'll let us, you know, pull his eye open and things like that. And when Gary finally was cast and came in, the first thing he said was, do you think we can clamp my eye open? What's it to me? Bows in or bows out? I feel this. Are you confused? I'll decide for you if you'll permit me. Child. The rig was, was pretty simple for Patsy. It was very effective and I thought just horribly violent. <laughs> but you know, those are the most fun things to do, aren't they? So um, it was a, kind of a stomach wrap loaded with these entrails and blood sacks and tubing and everything and uh, it was the the jerk of his body falling that caused this blood sack that was pre-cut to open and the entrails to to pour out and I thought it just worked very well it was pretty horrible to watch off of eBay we got a, a Russian boar head that we used and all then we copied it and punched all the hair into it and made this really incredible 
boar's head, which they use for the close-ups. You know, could do these snapping and biting scenes, and, and uh, we've also built a puppet of uh, uh, one of the Sardinians that was, you know, made out of gelatin, several layers, so the, the boars could tear away at it and eat it. We took the full bodies of the two guys getting attacked by the boars and made complete mechanical gelatin-skinned edible bodies with all the uh, sculpted underneath, all the anatomical correct, you know, bones and everything, and then stuffed chicken and stuff in between all that so that it was all edible. And the boars came over and just were pulling out the entrails and grabbed the one guy's face, ripped it right off, the gelatin, and, and it worked really well. This is the, the puppet we created for the brain-eating sequence. Of course, the skull cap comes off, and uh, we had animal brains in there, along with a kind of a fluid sac going over the top, so when you cut into it, it bursts out, and it's all runny and disgusting. <laughs> um, puppet has full facial movement, uh, eye blink, eyeball movement, back and forth, up, down, uh, jaw movement, cheek movement. Uh, neck movement, etc. The first thought was, oh my God, how are we going to do this? You know, it was just, it seemed to be an incredibly complicated sequence that had to be done um, with great precision. I mean, there, there would be no room for error on this. And, uh, you know, of course, we knew we were going to be working with the mill to create the scene, which, you know, left a lot of comfort, but, uh, you know, it's still, still a really frightening undertaking, you know, knowing that there'd have to be this exact duplicate of Ray Liotta in the form of a puppet, along with the makeup effect that went on his head, along with, of course, the talent of the, the mill, and just the merging of that. To me, it's one of the best scenes uh, that has combined all the techniques um, available. Um, it was an incredibly painful scene to watch. Even having built the product, you know, and seeing it every day in my studio. In that scene, there are two or three shots which actually are the figure and not Crendler. And I'm never gonna tell you which ones they were because it was so good. Eventually when I cut it in, I, I had to look closely and go, oh good Lord, that's the figure they made. So they did a really brilliant job. I think the merging, the very seamless merging, especially in this Crendler character, of the makeup effects, the puppet, and what the mill created, more establishes the need for, for each basis for technology, um, rather than saying that one will outdo the other. Uh, it was about five or six years ago, everybody was saying, you know, uh, the CG um, effects are gonna eliminate the makeup effects industry. Well, it's kind of nonsense, because we realize that there are things that need to be shot in camera. You know, the director needs to work with, the, the actors need to play off, or even the visual effects artists need to have a point of reference so that they can do their work properly. And I think that uh, the work that we did with the Kremler character really uh, established that e even stronger. Uh, it, was, it was incredibly seamless. I couldn't see any change between the three technologies being used. So, um, you know, I think that's kind of a feather in everybody's cap that it, it went off so well. You know, anybody can do gore effects and everything, but it, it's really fun trying to do something more that's a, a little classier, you know, and, and to try to do it. Because like Verger, I really wanted it to be disturbing. I wanted people to look at it and just go, oh, geez, you know, and really bother them and that. I didn't want to try to make it gory where it's just, you know, blood and guts and, you know, anybody can do that. But just so disturbing that it's in your mind. The thing that really surprised me when I saw it was the end with Ray Liotta. That stuff for a couple of days was, and I've never had that experience since The Exorcist of that, that disturbing picture in my mind of like, you know, humans shouldn't see something like that because it was, it really bothered me. I didn't think it would, you know, and I, because we worked on it.